Now, it's almost the end of our uh, conference. May started saying that uh, in Copenhagen, many people were wearing this T-shirt that is saying, we're here for, the future, for, for future generations. And today, people who were aware of the fact that climate changes have taken place already. And therefore, what the conference has told us is that as far as the climate's concerned, the future is going to catch up on us, if I can say. That is, what we thought would happen in 20 years or 30 years has happened already. And the past is like paralyzing us. And therefore, our states, our societies uh, look at fossil fuels uh, as being the only solution as if it were a drug. I wrote a book called Climat, la guerre de l'ombre, because I think what's important is what we said today. That is, if you look at the field of energy, there are two models that are quite different, that clash, if I can say, against each other in a violent way. There's one model that's based on fossil fuels. We could add the nuclear uh, energy. And it really is a model that's very centralized. It's based on oligopolies. And the only concern in this model is to continue with these uh, uh, f flows of uh, capital that they get. It's thousands of billions of dollars that they get from the business. And they feel that the end is cl coming. Uh, uh, and therefore, they're fighting back. They don't want uh, anybody to fight against climate change. And Against this old system, we already have a decentralized system, a system that's usually based on citizens and territories, a system that's not based on these annual flows of capital, but that's based on sharing. Think about these thousands of cooperative uh, plans that have started in Europe already, and look at what citizens do together. They act, they think about their own energy needs, they even lower their energy needs. And they equip themselves either individually or as groups, sometimes in co-ops. Usually they do this in the form of co-ops. They buy equipment and renewable energies that are affordable and decentralized. And therefore, the story they're telling is that rather than investing in fossil uh, fuels, rather than uh, supporting these, dis these dictatorships in Russia or in the Gulf countries, they're saying energy is something we can have an impact on. We can share energy. It can be ours. And that's the best lesson in this new model, this new model that people are developing. And this is what I called people who fight uh, behind the stage, la, la guerre de l'ombre. That is, after Copenhagen, everybody was despaired. Uh, uh, and uh, this was, however, a conference when people opened their eyes. Because even though it was a failure, uh, we understood that there was this struggle, this struggle about fossil uh, fuels and uh, that we've been discussing today. and. Uh, now that we've had this campaign on disinvestment, it's not this type of struggle, this warfare uh, in um, in behind the stage, but it's a different type of uh, struggle that we're fighting to free the states and the decision makers to uh, move away from this age of coal or carbon. Now, here's an example. I don't want to criticize any president because the, the previous president would have done the same. But when the uh, president of the French Republic, who's already uh, chairing the COP21, uh, when he goes to uh, Alberta, when the IPCC produces its report, and after five years, the IPCC said that uh, we must fight against climate change. Now, goes to Alberta and says, Total is here making the biggest investment in the world on shale uh, oil, which is one of the worst type of operations. And France has to play a, a role. And they, he's saying something that all, uh, well, some politicians are saying. So there's two parts in the brains. One that uh, 
wants to change and the other one that's still clinging to a world that's collapsing yet it, its imaginary is still in the heads of our societies. What's very important about this in disinvestment campaign is that this campaign is here to help us be freed from these uh, images that we have. We can all be uh, doing something about it. And this age of carbon is something we must stop. We are the ones who can decide that this is the past, that we can do a lot more than that. So now, I wanted to thank all of our speakers, all of the speakers who came. I'd like to thank you as well. That is the participants. It's been a long day. And I'd like to thank as well the interpreters who uh, helped us understand one another. We managed to have this conference in English. Maybe the language for renewable energies will not perhaps, well, maybe it's going to be not English, but today, at least for fossil fuels, the language is English, that's for sure. There's this one thing that we've understood. I'd like to thank as well Rainer Butekofer. Uh, he was the, uh, the main organizer, uh, the uh, master of ceremony with May Bove and with the European Green uh, Party and at the European Parliament, the Green Group, and 350.org. I'd like to thank his team and Roderick as well, who's worked really hard, and Sonia and Alex in my team and others have worked really hard. I'd like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. It's not the end of anything, it's the beginning of something. I think that, you know, this is our responsibility. Our duty is to be a source of inspiration for society. We live in a world today where there's a lot of tension, a, a potential war that we're looking at. It's not that easy, uh, and also, we should say that at least as far as the climate is concerned, we share the same uh, ideas. In a world where people say it was better before, we should be the ones who say it's going to be better tomorrow if we decide to manage our own future and destiny. Thank you very much for your attention.